Good evening, my name is Esri Glasson, and as you know, the Private Property Gang brings you amazing content every night this week. We start off with Zamantungwa Kumalo every Monday to Friday at 7 p.m. with the Private Property Podcast. And of course, Mbali comes to your screens every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. with the Farming Podcast. And last but not least, it's Chad every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. He goes around Mzanzi and travels amazing mansions and amazing apartments but also stay tuned to Chad's show because we're going to travel the rest of South Africa very soon and this is something you do not want to miss and this evening I am sitting with an absolutely amazing financial advisor when it comes to property as well as writer author Gavin Mkabele good evening Gavin how are you Good evening, Esti. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Thank good. You. That's good. I Thank <laughs> you for being here. Yes, um, and I love, I love the, the story and the conversations that we always bring to this platform. Mm. It's just a pity that we have most of the deep chats off camera. Yeah. But tonight is going to be a little bit different. And I'd like to bring that to the screens of our people. And we talk about money management, mm. right? And, you know, you within the financing field of managing property and managing your money when it comes to making these big investments. Yeah. And you... You obviously couldn't all your life. Mm. Money management was not what you could handle and what yes. you could do well. So on that note, I want to talk a little bit about because, and I hate starting the show with the downfalls. Mm. But you said you came to a point in your life where you lost everything. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah. So I think going back, um, so I was working for one of the major banks. Mm -hmm. um, so I started off in home loans. Fine enough. <laughs> um, in the <laughs> You know, so I studied in the cancellations department. I went to credit. So I was that guy that mm. called you to say, hey, look, your, yes. your house is about to go to the, uh, under the hem, mm. so to speak. And the funny thing about it is that um, I used to get the repo list every week. Mm -hmm. and, but I didn't know about this property investment thing. And I used to like, guys, please stop giving me these things. Yeah. You know? um, but I didn't know. And at the time, the repo list had everything you need mm. as an investor. Mm. It had the account number. It had a name and say name of a client. Yeah. It had the outstanding bond amount. And back in the days, the banks will sell or they will auction the house okay. for the outstanding amount. Uh -huh. And it had an address and the telephone number. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for, I mean, to really get in there. But yeah, yeah so the, it, it started there. And then, um, but I got into, into financial difficulties. And my, fin my financial difficulties really started on when I actually went in and got a lease mm. agreement. Mm. I signed a lease agreement when I, w I just started working. Right. Uh, lease agreement, um, my, it was a girlfriend mm. and um, she, she, could, she didn't earn enough. She didn't have a, credit, a good credit profile. Yeah. Uh, I did, just got permanent staff member, yeah. bank, signed the contract. I didn't know about the lease agreement. And, you know, things just went sour. She didn't mm. pay. I ended up now taking credit cards. I got into revolving loan. Mm. And that sort of snowballed. Um, and you can imagine when you're just starting to work and then yeah. all of a sudden you are now introduced to debt, but not good debt. Mm. And everything just spiraled out of control. Um, uh, fast forward, resigned at the bank, um, started a business, mm. business fell apart. And that's where everything just went mm. uh, under. I lost everything. I was engaged at the time, mm. just got a new baby, and yeah, I was just depressed. How did you come back from that though? It took me a while. Um, it really took me a while because, you know, through that transition, I went back home. Mm. Um, luckily, I had this, the family that I have that were very supportive. So, mm. um, but I think for me, that was a turning point because throughout that journey while I was down, mm. that's where I started you know, loving the whole aspect of personal finance. Uh, to, to every, actually, to, you know, the book itself, the first book that I wrote, you know, came there. I mean, I wrote it while I was really down, oh, fine wow. enough, wow. but mm. it was more around the stories, how I got there. Mm. And I was talking about how I'm going to get out while I'm still there, there yeah. you know, but it was all about, you know, starting to understand what, you know, wealth creation is, you know, mm. what value is. And through that, I started to pick myself up. I got a job. You know, I was like, look, get a job, pick yourself up. And that's how, you know, gradually, you know, things started to turn around. And did you, obviously you've got it, you've gotten yourself out there. Did yeah. you, when you were writing this book, did you take your own advice? Like in the moment? N not at the time. <laughs> because I mean, <laughs> I, I was down. Like, so yeah. How do you, you know, take yourself? And for me, I always say that period was a, a fair mind period, mm. you know, because nothing came right. Every yeah. time I would 
do something. I mean, I did everything. I cooked yeah. mkhodu, I, I sold stuff, and nothing was coming mm. right. But, you know, just when I was just about to give up and, yeah, I got my, my, my first break and th things just turned around from there. But it took me a while to understand because sometimes things happen or you start writing. What, what I've mm. seen is that you start writing stuff that you, you don't even know what you're writing exactly. about. And then all you know, how? You know, I, read, I wrote all of that, but actually that there was a message behind exactly. it. And yeah, and you so kind of have to look back to see the exactly. message. Exactly. Because you're right, yeah. once you're in that space, in that spot, and you, you spoke a lot earlier about like depression and yes. being in this very dark yeah. place at the time. It's hard to yeah. take your own advice. It's exactly. hard to read what you're writing and be like, oh, Gavin, then yes. do it. Yeah. You're writing these things, giving people advice, but it's you don't so do hard. It. You yeah. can't do it. And your, your book is Financial Planning for What? Yes. So, yeah, Gavin, financial planning for what? <laughs> we for want to why? know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously when I, I thought about the title mm -hmm. and um, when, you, when, when we always talk about finances, um, you know, people always, but for what? Mm -hmm. For what? Why should I plan? Why should I budget? Yeah. You know, why should I invest? Yeah, so it, it was pretty much taken from that context. Okay. And then when obviously you take it from there and when you read it, it becomes a total different story. Then you start to understand why liquidity is very important. Why should you save? Why should you invest? Yeah. Uh, you know, um, and then from there on, it starts to, to build up mm -hmm. because that's the basis. You know, I always say that the way we sell financial literacy in this country, and I think Nje, around the world, I, f I feel that is flawed because we always, especially in this country, put savings as the in thing, like it's the thing. Yeah. My mom's, I remember when I started working, she's like, you need to have a 32 days account. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, now you, you realize like, but 32 days account was not really investing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, it yeah. was not, yeah. yeah. So, but everybody was doing it. Mm. It was like, We're still if doing you, you're like, you have, you have arrived, <laughs> you have a 32 days account, you are the man, you know. Yeah. Only now when you're old, you realize, but ah man, that, that wasn't really it, it's, eh? Yeah. It's not investing. <laughs> you just get 4% exactly. below inflation. I uh, no, Yeah, it's but not. we just did it because we wanted to feel like, okay, yeah. we're not spending our entire salary. Yeah. We are saving. Yeah. Because you're right, we're taught to save. Yes. And just in the show before this, I spoke about, because um, I was reading a case study, mm. right? And they were talking about how South Africa is in a pandemic, but yeah. a pandemic called financial illiteracy. Yeah. Because we illiterate yes. when it comes to finance. Yeah. And that's, a lot. Yeah, and that's why we have these chats. And I want to go deeper into that book, Financial mm. uh, Planning for What? Yeah. Because you say that you write uh, in a way where you share stories. Yes. And I'm very big on real lived experiences. So yeah. give us one, a moment, mm. a story, a time where you felt that, no, we need to fix our financial literacy around this country. Yeah. And even within your own circles. Yeah. I, I think it, it actually started when I started to understand about, you know, issues of like property investing mm. um, because I wanted to learn more. What is this property investing? Mm. Um, OPM, what is this OPM, yeah. you know? And um, then you start to understand, man, there's this, the exposure aspect of it. Mm. We know we're not exposed to a lot of things because if you look at um, our communities, you mm. look at our backgrounds, it's again, you go to the 32 days account. My mom doesn't know yeah. about, you know, investments. Yeah. I mean, I'm, right now I just bought a house, mm for investment, you know, mm. and I'm like, <laughs> what's this for? Like, no, there's a tenant, you'll run it, and then, then so that I don't have to give you money. Right. You know, this will be your, your money, money, your monthly amount. Yeah. And these are the things that they, they don't know, mm. you know, because they, were, they, they didn't get that from their parents. Exactly. So we also don't know about these things, even with all of the information that we have, mm. and which is sad, you know. So, but I think my, my turnaround was when, through that journey of, you know, trying to pick myself up. And then obviously you start to read, you yeah. know, um, books like your Robert Kiyosaki's mm. and you start to understand, ah, man, there is actually... There's a method to There's a method. Yeah. You, you, it's not just people wake up, <laughs> you know. You, 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 there's, there's a transition exactly. that you need to go through. Mm. You need to know, okay, now I make 100 grand. How do I multiply that? Mm. You know, how do I bring a uh, value, yeah. for example? Like, if, if I, the, the, these days when I talk about personal branding, that has a big thing around mm. making money because your name is actually a very, very important currency. You're you know, a brand yeah, yourself. you are a brand yourself, yeah. and then money follows you. <coughs> and 100%. a lot of the times we follow the money. Yeah. You know, where the money must follow your name. Exactly. You know, and then you just sit there, and like people and like, we'll do. pay for you to talk. How? You get <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah. And it just comes, but we mm. don't know that because where we come from, it was not taught. Exactly. And I think that is why we're making these shows so that people are fully aware mm. of, look, you know, you need to 
there's a there's a language exactly yeah to everything there's a me methodology Method. yeah to that to the madness that exactly. you're going through yeah. now you said your first book you wrote when you were really down yeah your second book yes can we expect a different Ish, yes, that one is going to be fire. A very <laughs> fire. hot. Tell yeah. us about that one. Tell us, yeah. um, first, before you tell us about the second book, mm. why uh, did you decide to write? Mm. Why did you decide to put your stories in a yeah. book and share it with the world? Yeah. Uh, I think the second one is, is actually also very, you know, these books, they come very strangely. Yeah. Um, so the second one came actually last year okay. when COVID started. Yes. Yeah. So when COVID started, I, th I, I remember the first lockdown. Um, I, like the first three weeks I was paralyzed. Mm. I didn't know. I, I, I think I felt like every, a lot of people, I felt like the world was coming to an to end. Yeah. I mean, I, I deal with property. Who's going to buy property? Who's going to invest in property? I just felt like the world was coming to an end. Mm. Um, and then after three weeks, I just sort of like shut down. I didn't listen to the news. I just like, okay, you need to bring yourself up. Right. And the first thing that I started to realize that when people were locked down, mm. <laughs> so they were at home. Exactly. What did they do at home? Mm. They were on the phone. What did they do on the phone? They consume content. Mm. So I said, my content needed to be consumed Consumed's. as well. Yeah. So I started being aggressive in terms of writing. So I would write about budgeting. I would write, to the, don't, don't worry, we are in this thing, it's going to be okay. Right. Started writing about property, different types of property, mm. how to finance it, you mm. know. So obviously people are at home and they're, they're consuming and, all of yeah. this. And people started to say, preach, brother. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm like, okay, so there's something there. Yeah. You know, this amen thing. So I'm preaching. So give financial sermons. sermons That's yeah. how it came on. Okay. Yeah. And then, then I, I sort of hoi the logo there. Yeah. And voila. Yeah, the, the, the branding started. And then, then I started posting yeah. almost every day around different topics, budgeting, uh, financing, mm. um, relationships and finances. And then, of course, then people started following me like that. Mm. And... That's how the book came about. And my next question was actually going to be how you've seen your books mm. change people's lives. Yeah, it, 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 it's been amazing. Um, mm. I think obviously lo looking at the feedback that I've been getting. Um, it, and as I said, the first one, pretty much I was writing it for myself. Right. Um, and, and just the feedback that I've been getting to say, Kevin, like, for example, I talk about the two account system there whereby I realized when doing research that a lot of the times we get into financial troubles mm. because of having one bank account. Mm. Uh, because if you check that everything comes in one bank account, that's where we even have debit order anxiety, I mm. call it that way. Yeah. Uh, but if now you split your accounts, but obviously first thing you need to budget, of understand course. what's coming in, your fixed expenses, then you have a surplus. Right. Surplus, then you split it, you know, then you have Savings, savings, liquidity, investments, and then, then you have an entertainment account mm. because that's where the money comes out. Right. Right. So entertainment account, then you have a budget every month to sell, spend 2000 This is my me money. Mm. But you then take it out, put it in a different account. Right. And that's why you get accountability because every time I swipe, I know that I'm left with a thousand, mm. you know. So then people say, Kevin, I did that. Wow, it changed my life. Oh, wow, you know, yeah. I started to budget. I started having conversation with my, mm. with my spouse. Mm. Or, I mean, I have a chapter around maternity, how to plan for maternity. Okay. Those are the things that we don't think about. Exactly. But you just have a baby and like, yo, oh, the baby is very expensive. <laughs> 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 but you could have you planned, are. you know, mm. um, and all of these things. So, yeah, it's, it's really has changed. And then, of course, the blogging aspect has also been... You know, yeah. the positive feedback. Yeah. And I also did like the the financial fast that we did, mm. Jen, which was like amazing. People were like, Gavin, um, you know, things have changed for me. And a financial fast? Yeah. What? Tell us more about that. <laughs> I want to yeah. fast financially. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I thought about this thing. Like, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, people talk about fasting. Yeah. Um, more on a religious aspect. Mm. And I'm like, but why don't we also put a spanner into it and now be more concentrating yeah. on finances. So right. for a week we did that and there was different um, prayer points okay. or focal points every day. Mm. So we, we spoke about, um, you know, profiles, like credit profile. Mm -hmm. There was a day we dealt with credit profiles. I asked the guys, go and check your credit profile. Yeah. See what's happening there. Because a lot of the times we are so scared to look at it. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people's like, yo, Kevin, my score is actually not bad. Yeah. I can actually buy property. Right. Like, yeah, you know. And others, we talked about giving, financial giving. Mm. Because those things, we also don't realize how important they are. Mm. As much as we receive, we need to give. You know, so there was a lot of things that we did there. And I love how you linked it to the religious aspect of it. Yeah. Because... You know. And that, that I, I guess it helps us to some extent because 
worldly things mm. is what we're living with. This is yeah. what we need to deal with exactly. right now. But if you link it to a spiritual level, yes. which most of us kind of resonate yes. with, it helps us a little bit. Exactly. It makes the road easier. Yeah. Um, you talk about your second book we just spoke about, mm. you know, and you said it's going to be fire. So we're yes. waiting for that. <laughs> we're waiting pressure. for the fire. <laughs> the pressure. Um, yeah. t what's the what's what's different? You mm. said the first one was mainly for you. Yeah. The second one. Yeah. What is different about the two books? Yeah. So I think the first one was more introducing things. Yeah. You know, um, I introduced the budget. Yes, there was, um, you know, obviously things that I proposed people could do mm. that could change their finances, mm. uh, like property investing. At the time, it was. I didn't really know the in-depth aspect of, of it, yeah. but I knew there was something there, you know, so it was introducing that. Okay. So this is more in-depth. So we talk about what is the cash flow driven property, what is a capital appreciation driven property, yeah. um, what, the location, I, I talk about the psychology of an mm. area. And introducing yeah. terms that we know. Yes, really we don't know, with. like compound interest, mm. you know, um, OPM. What is it? Yeah. A lot of people they hear OPM. What what exactly is it? Yeah. You know, when you talk about stock fail, crowdfunding, yeah. what are the things we're talking about? Mm. Um, I mean, today I was talking, I was writing about black tax. Yeah. You know, and the first book it was more in you know highlighting mm. you know, more around what people should do. Now it's more on more of a generational wealth kind of That's setup. Living, yeah. You know, and how do you bring that? You yeah, solutions, solutions about it. it. Mm. Yeah. How how do we now make it? more progressive than before. Mm. Yeah. You said you were talking about black tax. Yeah. What about black tax? Yeah, it's very that, that one is very controversial. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So look, I mean, you know, black tax on itself, mm. um, I think we, because a lot of people are advocating that we shouldn't talk about black tax, the word itself, it should it's be banned. Okay, yeah. I don't really believe that. Okay. Because I believe there's two sides to black tax. And which is great because it highlights a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Because there's somebody that you know grew up very well. For example, the mother, father was there, right. and they don't have the pressures of now I'm working, the money must go, go home, home. Mm -hmm. right? And and they don't understand it. Mm. But there is somebody who's sitting today and says, Gavin, look, I yes, I understand. My mom took me uh, to school, yeah, okay, and then I started and... working. But now I, I, I now have to give back. Mm. But now that thing can turn into a burden mm -hmm. because now all of a sudden I'm over indebted. Exactly. You know, I, I can't do anything. There's a lot of people that I've spoken to that are depressed mm. because they can't do anything with mm. their money. I, I have my mother, I have my siblings, and it's just too much. But I understand that, that it's I my duty. Yeah, but I have to. Did it have to happen to me? <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. And we need to talk about it, but now to say, how do we fix it? For example, I had a client that way back when I actually, you know, started around financial planning because yeah. I was a financial planner once in my life. Yeah. And he came to me and said, Gavin, I can't save, I can't invest. Mm. Why? Because at home, there's certain things that I need to you take care of yeah. and it's just getting too much. I'm like, okay, let's come up with solutions. Mm. What can you do? What's happening at home? that you can actually provide? What service can you provide? Mm -hmm. said, yeah, but I come from Limpopo. It's very hot. I'm like, yeah. And there's always shortage around ice. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, why don't you get an ice machine? And he's like, okay. So we worked around it. He got an ice machine. Right. The ice machine gave back to another ice machine mm -hmm. to a point that they actually started distributing oh, wow. to filling stations and right. all of that. Like today, it's a full-fledged business. Run, yeah. Even quit work and they're running the business full-time. Oh, wow. So there's certain things that we can do there. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's a one-side, it's a one-fit approach. Yeah. You know, obviously there are siblings that won't want to do anything, no matter what you can do. Mm -hmm. But there's some that we just start to educate them to say, look, but you sitting here every day, mommy, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we are in the main road. Why don't we sell something? Yeah. You know, while you're chilling there, don't know what to do, you could be selling something. Right. And then that could be able to help us. Mm. And, and again, a lot of the times it's a pressure, especially when we're professionals. You come there with the Audi A4, but they don't know that actually you are in trouble. Yeah. You know, Driving but my child way. is a doctor. Yeah. So yeah. I want a double story. <laughs> you see, it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, but now we need to be able to, they need, we need to sit them down. It's like, mm. mommy, this is what yeah, I'm, I'm having. Yeah. This is my income. This is my expenses. Mm. You see, it's a problem. Mm. So work with me. I'm not saying I don't want to, pro mm. uh, you know, uh, provide for you guys but you need to work, work with, with me, me yeah. what can we do my siblings you guys are not working how can we upskill you guys mm. you know maybe let's put rooms and then then we can sure. be able to rent them out yeah. you know maybe let's get a taxi and put it on the line then we can be able to get money yeah. you know we start having different discussions but there's like also that. that fear of talking 
to yeah. our parents, talking That's to the, the elders about yeah. money. Yeah. Because then, and you're right, it's, it's overwhelming. Yes. It's sometimes a little bit scary because what happens is the expectation grows. Exactly. From you, yes. you know, the child that now has to give back. Yeah. So it's about opening the conversation, you mm. know, watching, yeah. listening to people like us, yeah. having these conversations and opening the platform to talk about this at the dinner yes. table. Yeah, I mean, I mean to, to also give you some perspective, mm. um, there's a couple of families that have said, Kevin, you know, you talk about these things. Mm. Mm. Can't you come and let's have a discussion? Coach, yeah, and then I've done that, yeah. yeah. When we come, they're having like a, a tea, kitchen party. Mm. Mm. Like, do a kitchen party. Yeah. And then I come, and then, then we have a discussions. And mm. they've been very well, because people are like, how? That's actually, we can talk about these things. I'm like, yeah, you know, we can talk about property. Mm. We can talk about investing. We can talk about a lot of things, mm. management of, and then, then I come with my, my, my board that I write, and then they start to see, and it's been amazing. That solutions are yeah. there. We just need to sit down yeah. and have these chats, you exactly. know, not be afraid yeah. to have them. Did Gavin have black tax, and how did Gavin deal with the black Gavin tax. still have black tax. Yeah, we, we, have, we, have, we still have the black tax. How are you dealing with it? Um, um, and of so, course, properties. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I mentioned now is that I decided, you know what? Let me get properties yeah. for my mom, my dad, and through that they can be able to um, live off. Um, because I can also, you know, you know, probably I'll get married. We don't know, and I don't want. You know, like, yeah, you, they must take care of themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so, but I, I, I think I started to, to, to think differently in the aspect of, you know, it's one thing to just give them every month. But I think if now we can create those assets that can be able to provide for them mm -hmm. and it will help them at, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And it, remember it as well, I mean, it's, it's not as if it's, it's just going in vain right. because that it, it's still your asset. Exactly. That when, if maybe they pass on, yeah. you know, it will still be in the family for the mm. kids and all of that stuff. So I think now I started to, to think differently, even from a business aspect. Right. Um, I mean, like now with the launch, we are having um, a financial revival weekend for the couples. Mm -hmm. And within that, I sort of also included family. Right. Like my kids are going to be providing flowers because they're starting a business for flowers. Oh, nice. And then there'll be service providers, you know. Yeah. So I'm starting now to, like, like let's have pro proper discussions. Right. Well, let's start businesses. Let's mm. help each other. Yeah. Let's, you know, f within the family itself. Mm. Yeah, so that we can be able to empower ourselves. You spoke about knowing your why. What is Gavin's why? Why are you doing what you're doing? We cannot, in day and age, our children, my child or my children, still going to suffer mm. the way I suffered. Mm. It can't happen, you know. So whatever that I can do, the contribution that I can make, I'll make. You know, mm. I also want to leave something, a piece of me. And that is why I think with the, the, the bow on the cover for this book represents that gift to the world to say look it, it's my contribution uh, how, how, however small it is yeah. but to humanity to say guys let us change you know let us do better and mm. it's exposure I always talk about exposure we can have Google but you know exposure is something that you experience exactly you know if you look at the, the Indian community you know the kids grow up knowing that they must go and work at the at the shop, shop yeah. they understand how to uh, you know take money how to yeah. reconcile how to do stop taking mm. i don't care if you you study nba that experience is much more heavier 100%. than the nba 100%. you know because you are physically seeing what's happening mm -hmm. and it, you and understand how it's going exactly yeah. you know so that is why it, it's generational mm. and, and and there's an amazing um you know two stories that i write about in the mm. book but obviously people must buy the book ah, and so um, just two that. families <laughs> <laughs> and how the story turned out differently really yeah and yeah but it's all about what happened mm. and you'll see how much exposure um how important exposure, exposure is, is to everything so there you guys heard it you have yeah. to buy the book in order to read those <laughs> stories and i think that's also key is that yes. a lot of us need to keep reading before we wrap it up again mm. still about your book you talk about ups and downs yes that you've gone through yeah i don't want to know about the downs mm, mm. we don't want to know about that we know <laughs> that it's happened and you've shared yes. a story that changed your life i mean yeah. you got into a point where you were in so much debt and you were still able to bring yourself yeah. up from that yeah. what is your biggest achievement thus far um i i think it has to be you know there's a lot of stuff you know mm -hmm. material but mm -hmm. i think th this purchase that i just did now uh, for my mother mm. and by the way she doesn't know so oh. it's a surprise <laughs> Mom. 
<laughs> it's a surprise. So we, you know, hopefully it will be registered uh, right. in the next two weeks, and then we're gonna do the surprise party nice. thing. Um, and for me, I think it, it's really to say thank you. You know, for I mean, she she was there. Mm -hmm. You know, she was always there for me. And even when I had to go back home, people didn't even know that I was down mm. because she would like, oh, let's go and buy you a, a top. Let's go and buy you, you know, this. Mm. So it's, it's really giving back to her yeah. and say mm. thank you. And I can imagine that day when we actually, you know, give her the keys yeah. and say, this is you for also. you. Um, so, yeah, you know, so I think that's the biggest. That, yeah. Biggest achievement thus far. Yeah. And that's amazing. Yeah. And that day is going to be nothing short of yeah. spectacular. You need yeah. to send us a nice video. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's going to um, take her to massage the day. And then you know, surprise. It's going to be like a, be a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a thing. That's amazing. I have yeah. one more question. I usually mm. do like a little surprise question. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read it quickly. So a famous motivational speaker, entrepreneur, South African guy, mm. probably know what I'm talking about. Um, there's a question. He's got a list of top 10 questions that he's really afraid that people might ask him. Yeah. And I took one of those questions yeah. and I'd like to ask you, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what if mm. the best decision to make mm. is a decision that goes against something you'd ever do? Mm. What do you do in that situation? I think it has happened a couple of times. Oh, yeah? Um, I think... Like, for example, if, if I go back to the book. Mm. So when I started, I mean, you can hear Kev's financial sermon. Mm. So it's more, it has that religious thing. Yes. And I've always been against branding myself in a, in a religious kind of oh, prospect. Really? Because I always felt that I'll then leave people out. Mm. And then people, some people like Muslims sure. wouldn't relate Resonate, to me. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, this thing was in me then I had to do it. And I was like, I'm doing this thing. Mm. Um, but I saw even my clients who like Muslims, like Gavin, I follow you all the time. I'm loving what you're doing. And I'm like, oh, seriously, yeah. I felt that you'll be out, you know? Yeah. So I think at times we overthink a lot of things. And mm. you, you know, at times you just need to go for it. Exactly. And as long as it's within your heart, as long as it's something that is progressive, something that is uplifting. And remember that we come from different backgrounds, you know? So it doesn't mean if I say God, then you yeah. must feel out of it. Of you know, as long as the message resonates with you, mm -hmm. it resonates with you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a Muslim, but I follow people that are within that space exactly. and, and I'm loving it. Mm. So we shouldn't box ourselves. And I think that's a problem. Mm. And that is why this world is getting divided every day sure. because we always box, I'm this, I'm this. Mm. We are South Africans, mm. we, but we need to acknowledge we come from different mm. yeah. backgrounds and let us appreciate that and let us learn from that. Exactly. And and this world would be a better place. And you know, this conversation went so so well because I'm just thinking about how, like I look at you sitting here and I'm just like, you still are learning a little bit more every single yeah. day. No one can be perfect at this thing, mm. right? And I love that you're sharing and educating this knowledge with other people, younger people. And just before this, actually, we spoke about being humble and humility that yeah. we, we need to always try and remember and to tap into and you were talking about how um you know people come to us every day looking for jobs yeah but the mere fact that when you people want money we yeah. need money to yes. survive the mere fact you were saying someone didn't want to pick up a broom and sweep yes. or take a mop and mop yeah. the floor mm. but you want money mm. and you want so again back to the thing about humility so i want to find out from you gavin yes. just as we close this off how important is humility for gavin it, it's very, very important. Um, and I, I remember the, I think it was two weeks back, or last, last month. Um, so I, I, I posted something where I said, you know, I, I, what I do, I, I do it from my heart, mm. you know. And they, they, there's something about writing that people can pick up the emotions. Mm. And I wrote that, and, my, and my, my, one of my clients said, Gavin, you know what, actually, if you were not doing it from your heart, I wouldn't be your client. Right. I'm like, but how do you know no. that I, I was talking? I was like, I, she's like, I can read between the lines. And a lot of the information that you share, you don't have to share. Right. You know, it's, a, a lot of people would charge us for that, yeah. but you share it, you know. So, and that can only show mm. that it comes from the heart and humility aspect of it. So I think that, that's where we need to start understanding. And for me, yeah, that's why this building Kevin as a brand is and so as you know, emotional as I am is very important mm. because I want people to tap into me, mm. not 
something else or somebody else. It's just as raw as I come. Yeah. And it's very difficult to do that because at times of my family, some people will be like calling Kevin. Why are you telling people that you're going for counseling? <laughs> but, but, you know, maybe yeah. somebody is scared mm. to do it mm. and maybe they can, you're you know, that love push, that. Yeah, yeah so them. why not? Yeah. Yes. And that's exactly where I want to end it off. And this is just a little quick question to the viewers watching. Take this time now and find out what is your brand? You know, how are you going to carry on with your journey through life? What is your brand? What are you offering the world? Mm. What is your purpose? Mm. Thank you so much. As you know, we're live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. We'll see you guys again next week. Take care. Thank you.